Millions of people have died in the savage war here in eastern Congo, and world leaders are averting their eyes. Yet one of the few who is on the case is Lisa Shannon. Lisa is a 34-year-old woman from Portland, Oregon. This is your calling. <laughs> More than stock yeah. photography. Oh, yeah. I found her here in the town of Bukavu, and in a grim war zone, she managed to leave me feeling upbeat. Lisa explained that it all began five years ago when she watched an Oprah show. Hi, Oprah. I am standing here on the border of Congo. Uh, the border's right behind me. It's two years and one day since I saw your program on the Congo, which completely changed my life. For me, it was about finding some simple way to send the message that these lives mattered, at least to me, and, and I was going to do what I could to help. And then, I mean, all I could think of was running at the time. She ran 30 miles to raise money for victims of mass rape in Congo. That led her to found the organization Run for Congo Women and hold fundraising runs in 10 states and three foreign countries, supporting sponsorships for Congolese women. We had hundreds of people here today. Exactly. An amazing turnout. The more involved Lisa became in the Congo effort, the more her priorities changed. When her fiancé and business partner finally asked her to choose, she chose Congo. And uh, I'm about to meet uh, my first group of sisters. When Lisa first crossed Actually, over in eastern over. Congo in 2007, hundreds of women were waiting for her. One of the women whom she had written letters to was Generaz Namburo. Generaz was recovering from an infection after having her leg cut off by a Hutu militia. Lisa paid her medical bill. On a recent rainy night, I accompanied Lisa on a visit to see Generaz. We met Generaz hobbling through the mud. Welcome. <laughs> she led us to her house and later told us her story. One night, an extremist Hutu militia invaded her home. First, they shot her husband. Meanwhile, one was trying to rape me. When I cried, he said I was trying to warn people of the attack, and so he jumped on me and cut off my leg. They used a knife to cut my leg into pieces and then cooked them over the fire. The soldiers then ordered the children to eat their mother's flesh. The children said they wouldn't eat their mother, so the soldiers threatened to kill them. When they realized they would be killed, they ate. But my 12-year-old son refused, and he was killed. After three months in a hospital, she moved her kids to the outskirts of Bukavu and resorted to selling charcoal for survival. She was assigned Lisa as a sponsor through Women for Women International, receiving a photo of Lisa, periodic letters, and a small monthly stipend. When Lisa showed up in person in 2007, she gave Generaz another gift. She gave me money to build a house so that I wouldn't be homeless when I left the hospital. I believe God sent me Lisa to rescue me from my misery. So, Lisa, I have to ask you this. You've just heard yourself described as a messenger of God, as the, just the transformative effect you've had on Generaz's life. Yeah. You listen to that. I mean, what does it make you feel? It's humbling because it it was so easy. What I've done is nothing compared to what she's lived through. But when you sit here and hear Jenna Ross and hear the way she talks about you, does it all kind of seem incredibly well, worthwhile? Congo kind of is my life now. <laughs> um, but I can't think of a better reason to be alive. For me personally, it's clear whatever I was pursuing in my life left me feeling pretty empty. Um, and I feel like I've learned so much from Congolese women. They've lost everything. I mean, you know, their families have been killed. They, they have no means of supporting themselves, but they take children in. Even when they don't even know how to feed their own kids, there's no question that people are the most important thing to Congolese women. So I've basically tried to restructure my life to emulate that in some way. Lisa tells the story of her journey in a book, A Thousand Sisters. It'll be published in April. Lisa is now working full-time on the Congo cause, for no salary. In addition to fundraising, she's advocating for politicians to apply diplomatic pressure to bring peace here. Okay. 
Right. The morning after visiting Jenneraz, we dropped by the home of another woman whom Lisa had sponsored with her runs. I was pregnant while Lisa was my sponsor. The first time when she sent me her photo, I loved her so much, I decided that if I have a baby girl, I'll name her Lisa. I've ridden often from Congo over the years, and on every visit I see more rape victims, more survivors of massacres or mutilations. And the most depressing part of it all is that even after a Holocaust-sized death toll, the world seems to show little interest in stopping it. Who's that? That's me. Maybe that's why I like Lisa's story. Against this grim backdrop, she's a reminder of compassion, activism, and hope. For The New York Times, I'm Nicholas Kristof in Bukavu, Congo.